Hello, and welcome to a new episode of Bright Ideas. If I'm looking more mature to you, it's not an age thing. It's the mental maturity of approaching today's topic with some knowledge from last season that I kept up in this little guy. You might remember we talked about saving for a short-term goal, which could be as simple as investing some of your savings so it earns more for you than it would sitting in a bank account. It's a strategy called fixed income investing. So if you like income, which who doesn't, this is the episode for you. Today, we're going to go even deeper on fixed income investing and the various sub-asset classes it taps into. And that's not just maturity, that's growth. And of course, we're here to help you grow as well. And that's why we did some online polling before this new season to learn how you approach building up your own savings. Stay tuned later in the episode to hear what you all said. Now, I'm gonna brighten the horizon here by introducing Adam Kramer from Fidelity, who's gonna talk to us about putting the income in fixed income. Adam, welcome to Bright Ideas. Thanks, Rod. It's great to be here. It's been genuinely such a nice feeling coming into this new season of financial conversations, having learned and even applied some things from the first season. Adam, tell me a little bit more about what you do. I'm a portfolio manager at Fidelity Investments, and some terms that often get attached to my area of work are high income and high yield. High income describes investment vehicles that have the potential to generate attractive levels of current income for investors. This can include stocks that pay dividends or high yield bonds, which are fixed income investments that can pay a higher level of income than other categories of bonds. So in my job, um, I invest not only in bonds, but also in stocks and several other types of assets that come together to create an approach called multi-asset income investing, which we'll cover today. So I've actually um, spent my entire career at Fidelity, starting when I was a summer intern nearly 25 years ago. And back then, I probably had some of the same questions about investing and income as your viewers do. Wow, my first job was a dishwasher, which gave me a financial education that I only learned what a FICA was. But now we're here to talk about putting the income in fixed income. Can you take us back? When did you first start to get excited about it? Starting out as a kid, Mm. I began collecting hockey cards. And one of the things that make investing in a collection of hockey cards or maybe it's baseball or basketball or football cards, is that you're basically trying to find a player that's not appreciated by the markets. And when I got older, I ended up finding out that researching investments like stocks and bonds and researching companies ignited the same passion as researching players and their stats. Let's say someone's financial goal has made them realize they need to grow their savings. How can investing support growing your savings? So in fixed income, you really have tiered goals. Mm -hmm. Uh, One is to get back 100 cents on every dollar that you put in. And this is known as the face value or par value of the bond. And the second goal is tied to the coupon, which is the amount of interest you'll be collecting along the way. So for example, buying a bond. When it matures, you should get back 100% of your initial investments. But the risk is that you may not get back that original investment. Mm -hmm. So the higher the risk of not getting your investment back, the higher the rate of interest. Mm -hmm. Essentially, you're being compensated for that additional risk. Now, on a spectrum of ways your money can potentially generate regular income for you, think of cash sitting in a savings account. In this case, you'll collect that regular interest rate attached to your account. Let's take it one step up to a true fixed income vehicle, a treasury bond. This is issued by the government, and essentially the government is borrowing money from you. So you might realize higher interest on that investment versus the interest in your savings accounts. Let's take it even further, another step up, into bonds issued by companies. Here, many factors go into determining a company's success or preventing it. So there's a slightly greater chance you won't get back that 100 cents on every dollar we talked about. Mm. So when we talk about risk relative to interest, it's likely this bond could generate a higher fixed income in the form of those regular interest payments along the way. Another way to think about risk is one we covered in the previous episode, which was all about weathering what can feel like economic storms. Basically, do hard times for the economy relate to how much income an investor could expect from something like a bond? So at Fidelity, we have a deep bench of specialized researchers who can build a mosaic of information to guide those decisions. And what the economy is doing is just one tile in that mosaic. Your average DIY investor, once they buy a bond, they're most likely going to hold it to maturity. So when we're talking about selling or holding on to bonds based on in-depth research and analysis of markets, that's more happening at the managed level as part of this multi-asset income strategy. 
What does that mean, multi-asset income? What are the assets that you're mentioning? So let's build on what we talked about earlier, that spectrum of income such as cash in your bank uh, to bonds issued by the government or individual companies. Mm. A multi-asset income portfolio might be made up of those and a variety of other types of income producing sub-asset classes. Say we're talking about interest income that could exceed what an investor could see from U.S. government and investment grade corporate bonds, then one option might be a high yield bond uh, issued by a company with a lower credit rating. Mm. Or it could be a floating rate loan, which has a coupon that resets at regular intervals. I think if someone already has a basic investing approach in place, then mm -hmm. it could come down to the idea of diversification, mm -hmm. uh, of seeing where the opportunity to try out some of that multi-asset income strategy we were just talking about. Maybe you already have exposure to blue chip stocks uh, or an investment grade bonds. But now that you know a little bit more about what lies beyond that, and how the risks associated with those vehicles are calculated and how they translate into interest income, you might consider something uh, besides the blue chip stocks or investment grade bonds that are already part of that strategy. Where can our viewers go to learn more about the fixed income investing strategies we've talked about today? So we have some good guides on fidelity.com and I'd encourage viewers to visit those sites on the screen if they're interested. Amazing. And something you might find interesting is the way our audience answered some online poll questions around their investing motivations. So let's take a look at those results now. This one took stock in why we invest. Okay, so some are goal oriented, some are future focused. Smart money moves, all of those are really. Here's a look at expectations on a return on investment. Yesterday wasn't an option. I bet some people would have picked it. And that's a great window into the way savings behaviors can become investing behaviors. Mm -hmm. Your money is an asset, and if some is in checking, some is in savings, maybe some is in your retirement account, that is on a basic level a multi-asset strategy. But think about how much uh, harder your money could be working for you uh, with this knowledge of multi-asset income investing that we just discussed. Adam, thank you so much for being here. This was really interesting, and I loved getting to know a little bit more about your story, and also building our knowledge on fixed income investing. Thanks for having me, Rod. And thanks for tuning into this episode. We'll see you next time for more Bright Ideas.